changing, see his glory, feels like heaven on earth, something's moving, something's changing, see his glory, feels like heaven on earth, something's moving, something's changing. Thank you. 
I don't know how many of you know your problem in life is not your problem. Your problem is the way you look at your problem. Number two, life without problem is useless. We all grow by the problems we solve. <clears throat> A barren mango tree cannot attract any stone from boys. If you stand where God will not allow problems to come your way, it simply means you have been given up. There is no hope for you. This night I want you to learn how to see beyond the sin and see beyond the obvious and see beyond the natural. The economy of this country is not a problem. Yeah, pardon me, the way you look at things around you. Others have emerged from this lousy economy of this country to be great. And this night, everything you need to be great has been provided. Sometimes I'm paying while we're speaking to you on how to confront what confronts you. Some of you get so distracted, you're not interested. And yet at the end of the service, you go. But you go as you came. This night I want to announce, you can go not as you came. Yeah. Yes, somebody can push you down, but don't rise up and to pick something. Let no problem frighten you. Let no man frighten you. I told, I told, I suspended a pastor here in New York. And, and he said to me, Omar, this night I'll visit you with them robbers. I, and I said, let them come on time so we can finish the business of the day. He asked me, are you not afraid? Of what I said. What did you say? Every arm robber is afraid of death. And, and every arm robber is afraid to meet with trouble. So let them come, but let them come early. He came and asked me, Did you hear me well? I heard you well, sir. He said you visit me tonight with arm robbers. It's like the day Satan came to my hotel room in Lagos and, and asked me, do you know me? I said, no, sir. Who are you? He said, I am Satan. I don't like the message you preached yesterday. I'm going to punish you for that message. I, uh, my brother, you look like my father's neighbor. So I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> In this life, let nobody frighten you. In this life, make up your mind what you want to be. Only you decide what your tomorrow will be. Nobody else. I am amazed that God will spend so much time to say, I will bless you. I will take care of your battles. Whoever blesses you, I'll bless him. Whoever curses you, I'll deal with him. My brother, we should all be dancing. Not everybody hears this. Others hear what demons are saying. But we don't hear what demons are saying. We hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. You will determine your tomorrow. The arm robbers came. <clears throat> and God also came. When your enemies shall come, God shall be at the door waiting for them. The 
the pastor had to call Pastor Who, what's his name again? Ben, Ben of you. And ask him to beg me, to beg God not to kill them. That was my best prayer that year. Where I found myself praying for those who came to kill me. That they may live. Wow. You will decide what your enemies, where your enemies will be, what they will do, what they will say, and where they will go. Because you have a relationship with him whose power has no measure, no comparison. Are you still here? <laughs> I, I, have bro I have brothers who never like me, but the same father with me. I'll take time to say to them, whether you people like me or not, you won't change my future. You will not change my tomorrow. My tomorrow has been fixed by he whose power has no measure, no comparison. I want to announce that that power is your God. Yeah. Wow. It's what? You are God. Let's give the Lord a good clap of from everybody. Amen. I don't know if you have noticed that there are people around where you were born that hardly bury anybody. Because people hardly die around them. This night I'm going to demand that the spirit of death around your family, around your village, will no longer locate you. When, when I speak of locating you, I mean locating your family members. Yes. I don't even know if you know there are people, every time you see them, they look happy. They're always well-dressed. They drive the best of cars. They smile such. I had a man, a friend of mine here in New York. He said to me, I hate you just for the way you smile. I hate your laughter. <laughs> and I said to him, I thank, okay, do you know how happy I am that at least I know one man who does not like me? Thank God for that revelation. Right where you are this night. Do you really know that heaven knows your name? Cares about you? Fights for you? has a plan to promote and catapult you to the place of honor and promotion. Yeah. No, do you really know this? Yeah. Then, step out and find three persons of your choice. Say to each one of them, I am not an ordinary person as people think. I want to thank Guy Tinyang for the sacrifice she has made along with Mary Mandy. <laughs> this life is very fun. I went to Cameroon with my wife to preach. And they were singing Nigerian songs. I called the pastor, Oga Pastor. Is everybody here in Nigeria? Can't one Cameroon and sing for us? Good man. He said to me, we have a mother of six children. She can't sing very well. What has a woman's no number of uh, children got to do with her voice? Call her. Let me hear her. <laughs> the man sent for Mary Mandy. When she sang, I called the pastor. I said, this is gold mine. I'm, I'll take her to Nigeria now. I'll make her a professional musician. A rich girl. All of us must learn to see where and what people cannot see. 
Men who see what others cannot see shall rule over the rest of the people. To this girl, to me, she was a good music mistress and a manager and a great girl. We brought her to you, brought her to you, asked my brother-in-law to be her manager. Went around the whole east in search of musicians from Central Africa and East Africa and took her to BFM, took her to redeemed programming for Tankot, put her in a five-star hotel. Her first time in a five-star hotel. She brought the place down. Everybody wanted, everybody loved her. Her story changed. Her language changed. The way she walked changed. Right where you are, your star will soon shine and explode. I don't know if you know we are gathered here because of you. Where God has promised to bless you. To bless you. What does that mean? To bring out the best in you. What does that mean? To give you creativity and imagination and wisdom. To make you look at what others look at. And see what they will never see. That's where you are. <laughs> when, when we returned to Cameroon, the pastor met me and said, do you know that girl we gave you to lead our worship has catapulted to the sky. We can't even say hi again. She's all over the world. I want to announce you are next in line. To have such to have such promotion. You are not an ordinary person. The only reason why Satan is attacking you is because of jealousy. How many of you will move with the Spirit of God tonight and tomorrow night to whatever God leads? Are you sure? Are you sure? Then tell one person I'm on my way to greatness. And nobody can stop me. <laughs> God, men and brethren, they arrested Ojuku and took him to a good prison in Lagos. On his way, he gathered all his books and said, they called this place prison, I called it library. I'm going to read to improve myself. Can you learn how to name your problems? Don't call your problem what your problem calls itself. Huh? <laughs> he carried every book he could gather to the prison room and prepared a place for reading. Satan is free to throw stones at you, but you give that stone a name. It shall be the grinder that grinds your granite. You didn't hear me. <laughs> let's, let's turn to, take your seats. Let's start our journey. Can somebody, okay, our reader, you're here. Read toward the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. What does it say? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Right where you are sitting tonight, God does not see you as one failure. He sees you as a great person. And you will be a blessing to every member of your family. Already, I announce that you are now the treasurer of your family. <laughs> K. 
Can you imagine elders of my village inviting me to our village to say we want water? Give us water. We want roads. Give us roads. I, I tried to protest and God said no. I am your bank. When they hold you, hold me. <clears throat> I don't know whether my wife has even heard this. A young man walked up to me and said, God asked me not to allow you to spend a kobo of the money you brought from Uyo. God asked me to give you money every day until the day you go back to Uyo. Don't touch your money. God asked me to give you 100000 a day for four weeks. I've never... I've had all kinds of miracles, not this type. Every morning, the young man would show up with money, bundle of money. I think my wife said, he, she asked him, are you not tired of giving him money? And the young man said, no, as God prospers me, so shall I give him. When we went to the village square, where they made this demand on me, to bring money for the village water. The young man raised up his hand and said, whatever, he said to whatever you pledge, I'll give it to you now. What? <laughs> I, I just said to this God, are you not too wonderful? I, I'm not too like to pledge and somebody else will pay. Anybody? Raise your hand, let me see. Number one, do you believe it is possible? Yes. Number two, do you believe it shall come your way? Yes. Number three, do you believe it shall happen to you one day? Yes. <laughs> the important thing is that the elders of my village did not hear what the young man said. They said, oh my said he would give six million. I didn't want them to change their position. I just said, Amen. Madam brethren, we belong to such a great family that this, our God can do anything for us. I don't know if you know that this God can send someone from America to change your story. I was speaking in the University of Nigeria in Sukkah, 1973. I was the first missionary. I was the first missionary to Madibele University. On arrival in ABU, a, a professor came to me and said, Uma, I know you're a young man, but last night I was sleeping and God made me your driver. Throughout your stay in Isaria, I will be your driver. If where you want to go, call me. You, white man, will be my driver. He said, yes, sir. Okay, tomorrow, 8.30, let's go and see my cousin. We arrived in my cousin's house. My cousin asked this white man, what did this my brother tell you about himself? He is nobody. How can you be his driver? <laughs> the old man said to him, I don't belong to myself, I belong to God. Whatever God leads me, I will follow. Stop worrying about who I am and what your brother told me. God made me his driver. He played no part. Throughout my stay here, I shall be his driver. If you don't like it, you can go to court but I'm, I am ready to be his driver. The car is fueled. I am set to drive. The key is with me. My cousin asked me, are you a preacher or a magician? What did you do? Hey, okay. I just came to greet you. Stop. <laughs> Beginning tonight. The hand that promotes others shall promote you.
I'm trying, I'm trying to show you the limitless, boundless possibilities of our God. This God can do many great and mighty things. That house you admire in your village, and sometimes you get jealous that somebody was able to put up such building. One day, the size of your house shall match that size. Are you still here? How many of you believe it shall be so? <laughs> Number two, anybody that God shall bless must have wisdom. Number two, must have creativity. Number three, must have imagination. I don't know if you know, all of us, we are limited to our imagination. If you can imagine yourself being flown in a jet, you know, one day you'll be flown in a jet. We had a program in Ibadan. For who again? Femi Manuel. And the average heir, being the spiritual chairman, sent me a jet to fly us from Uyo to Ibado. Joe and myself. Men and brethren, we arrived at uh, Emmanuel's church and packed the jet. He came out and began to cry. My friend, why are you crying? He said, I've never had a speaker that flew in that brought an aircraft, a jet of this type. Hey, Father, what did I do to marry this? He began to cry. <laughs> he asked me, can I go into that jet and just lie down? And for what of the meeting we came to run? He said, forget that meeting. Can I go into the jet? I said, sure, you can he stepped into the jet and began to cry that in his lifetime his guest speaker will fly into his church rolling a beautiful jet well what I did not know was did he know that my God was also his God Tell somebody that God is my God. No, how many of you believe when they shall be a tongue? Are you sure? Yes, sir. <laughs> then shout good hallelujah. hallelujah. There was this day. A governor, I won't give you his name. A governor said, I've just uh, spoken to um, Eric. An aircraft will be coming to fly you back to you. I was amused. When we arrived at the airport, people were clapping that a preacher could hire an aircraft. Nobody bothered to know if I hired it or it was given to me or everybody just concluded I must have hired it. Right where you are, the God itself has the capacity and the potential the ability to hire a jeep for you. Yeah. Hire an aircraft for you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe it? Yeah. Then don't cry like those who have no God. Don't cry like a non-believer. Where was this again? We're coming back from Gordon. We got to the uh, airport and they said all flights have gone out of the Abuja airport. So we sat chatting and talking. I heard my name over the air. Uh, whoever is driving Dr. Mao by our aircraft 153 capacity plane is waiting for you to take you to you. I 
I think I asked Pastor Joe, what, were they speaking Greek or English? What did they say? It, it's difficult to know the limitless, boundless possibilities of our God. He can do so many things. And therefore, you have no reason to cry and mom over anything or be jealous or be envious of anybody's dress or shoes. So you don't know what this God can do for you. It doesn't require your money. A young man gave me 25 pair of shoes. I asked him, what would I do with 25 of them? While I was still grumbling, somebody brought me 100 suits to wear. I asked him, for how long? This God says, I will help you. Let's go back to chapter 12 of the book of Genesis. Let's take verse 1, and then we take verse 2, and then we take verse 3. Now the Lord has I don't know whether you know that God has wasted that page because of you. Every story about that page is about you, you. You look down on yourself, you say, I am nobody. But this God says you are big enough to discuss with heaven. Yes, sir. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. And from thy kindred. And from thy father's house. From thy father's unto house. Unto a land that I will show a thee. A land that you don't know which I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation. Wait. He says I'll make of who? Are, are you sure? Yes, then say it loud. Let's hear. <laughs> Awesome God. He said, I'll make of thee a great nation. What does that mean? It means that most of the children shall be kings and queens. I don't know if you have gotten my joke. Yes. There are children from their childhood act like adults, they discuss like adults. And what they want is what adults want. That is the kind of children God will give you. Yeah. The Bible calls them kings, but I call them noble men. We, we had a great drama, my wife and I. I. I gave our grandchildren money. As I got through giving her that money, their mother came. I, I gave her money also. The youngest of the children asked me, Daddy, is our mother also a child and a baby? <laughs> this is a six-year-old boy. He asked me, Sir, Grandpa, why did you give her money, our mean mother, money, when you gave us money? Is she also a baby? Tell him to give us back this money. He belongs to babies. Men and brethren, only a noble child with a great future can talk that way. You will not have ordinary children. Yeah. Read on, sir. And I will bless thee. Uh, when the Bible says I will bless thee, it is like a painter saying I will add paint to this wall. God will make your life beautiful. God will remove the thorns upon you. That fish you're about to eat that has that has bones, the bones shall be removed. And this God shall fight your battles. You don't have to fight. You don't have to fight. Read on, sir. And make thy name great. I will make thy name great. What does that mean? It means anybody that speaks against you shall speak no more. Yeah. Eh? What did I say? 
Anybody that speaks against you shall speak no more. Why? Because God is opposed to it. God will not allow anybody to slander you or insult you or humiliate you. No. You have he who is your guide and guard. <laughs> Read on, sir. And thou shalt be a blessing. The Bible has made you somebody of great multiplied wealth. Only a man who has surplus can be a blessing to others. Am I correct? Therefore, right where you are sitting tonight, heaven has declared and decreed that you will have what I call surplus supply. I've been going home for more than 60 years. This is the first time I'll go to my village and come back with the same amount of money I left to you with. Don't ask me how much was the money. That will shock you. I ask God, what does that mean? He says, it means I care for you and I love you. I'll fight your battles anywhere you go. Even if it is in a deep forest, I shall be there armed to find for you. You don't have to beg anybody for money or ask for money. Then I went home with 10 million naira. And I came back with 10 million naira. In talking to you all, I speak out of the depth of my heart. Because I want you to be a great person. No obstacle shall stop you. No man shall stop you. No enemy shall stop you. Those who don't like you, they're not strange. They're part of Nigerian society and, and community. We have people who hate others. Just that you look more handsome than they do, they get angry. That dressing fits you more than it fits them, they get angry. But men and brethren, it's part of the game. Everybody can like you. Everybody can love you. So when a pendulum swings to the left, it will require an opposite force to bring it to the right and maintain an equilibrium. Everybody can love you. <laughs> so when <laughs> when one person hates you, there are five million others who love you. But even if you don't have up to five million, the maker of heaven and earth loves you and can fight your battles. He can fight for you. If you believe your God can fight for you, raise up your hand and declare and say, my God can fight for me. It is not over until it is over. So anybody free to say what he likes about you. Only when God speaks shall it be final. Read on, sir. And I, will, and I will bless them that bless thee. I don't know if you have ever taken time to think through that Bible line. It's a powerful, awesome Bible line. God says, anybody that thinks of helping you, I will consider him for promotion. I will consider him for honor. I will carry help to him. I will bring assistance to him. Even those that he does not know. Like this young man, yes, I knew him, I know him, but I didn't know he could make such offer. I'm saying every day I'll give you 100,000. Every day you will give you 100,000. Oh God, that's much money. Are you sure? He said, yes, sir. The money is already tied up, waiting for time to come.
He said, anybody who helps you, God will stop his activities and will carry help to that person. Does that make you happy? Because when God recognizes those who help you, they are also promoted in a way. They will know that what they were doing was not in vain. That an eye was watching them. Not watching them without a reason. Watching them to know how to reward them. And they shall be rewarded. If you know what I think I know. You should walk through life happy. My greatest pain is this. You hardly find Christians who can smile very well. Many of them can't even smile for a whole day. I think there should be a change. If your God is good to you, let your smile show it. A young man was giving a tract in Enugu. He saw a man and stopped the man to offer him tracts. The man said to him, I've been watching you from afar. You look so happy. If the tract has made you so happy, I don't want to touch the tract. I don't want to be. I am already unhappy enough to cry. So don't hide your problem. <laughs> Can we say to God, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray the apostle Abbas and the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray the apostle Abbas and the Hallelujah.
discussion and for you to involve God in your thought processes as you think recognize God's presence he is by your side who knows if he has come to heal you who knows if he has come to speak to you who knows if he has come to promote and lift you to the place of honor and promotion that is the essence of turning the music into musical discussion I'm not wasting your time. Because Saul is an invitation that God cannot refuse. And when God visits you, your life will change. Take your seat. Yes, next line. And curse him that cursed thee. Uh, uh, the, the beautiful thing about the Christian life is that when your enemies attack you and rejoice that they have attacked you, they will be ashamed and amazed to see God participate in that fight and take over your place and tell your enemies never again will they stop you and insult you. <laughs> I... I <laughs> I went into hot presidential hotel Port Harcourt with some soldiers escorting me. A senior officer saw us, got angry. I asked the, the, the commander, are you escorting an ordinary bloody stupid civilian? You must be stupid. I'm going to order for your arrest now. Uh, as he said, the rain came down from heaven. He had four tires went flat. If your four tires will go flat and rain comes upon you, will you still execute your anger? <laughs> I tiptoed near the car and said, uh, Commander, how are you there? <laughs> when heaven fights for you, it will show. And I want to announce that you have come to a level where heaven would like to fight on your behalf. Wow, awesome God. Read on, sir. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In so winning, we become a blessing to wherever we go. And as a believer, we are under instruction and command to be so winners. When you lead anybody to Christ from a family, you have blessed that family. A voice that prays shall be in that family. A voice that talks to God about his family shall be in that family. Their problems will not become their promotion. This God will answer their prayers. Amen. Yes, sir. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him, and Lot went in to him, and Abraham was 70 and five years old when he departed out of hell. Men and brethren, the great thing about Abraham was this. He was a man that could obey God. And, and did obey God instantly and intelligently and intentionally and totally and completely and implicitly and in any way and in every way. This God, he, he, Abraham could obey God. Even when God makes great demand on him, he asks him to leave everything he had and follow him and show him a place where he will go. He said, yes, sir. He sought for a child for so many years. When he got the child, 
The same God came back and said, Abraham, offer this boy to me as a sacrifice. Okay? I have only one. There are people with ten children. Can't you look towards that direction? <laughs> God did not answer. I have been looking for this child for years. God did not answer. Men and brethren, the Bible records what shocks me. He woke up early in the morning and carried a child as a sacrificial lamb. Tied him to a sheep. He didn't even bother to tell his wife. That shows he was a sold out believer. He was a sold out Christian. If God wanted him to surrender his shoes under the sun, he'll give it up. If God would ask him not to eat food, he would not eat. And we're looking for men that shall love God that way and obey him this way. Men that shall obey him completely and totally and implicitly and in any way and in every way and all the time. Can we find one in this house? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Raise your hand, let me see. Can you then say to God whatever you ask me to do? I'll do it. It was here in New York that Am Robert broke into places and stole things. The, the governor called me and I said to him in two hours' time, those who stole shall bring back what they stole. In two hours' time, they brought back what they stole. The commissioner shocked me when he said, I have an offering for you. This is a great miracle. But that is what God expects of us. To obey him. At all costs, at any time, at any place. To obey him completely. To obey him totally. Men who obey God shall be loved like Abraham was loved. Right where you are tonight. All that God wants of you is to obey him. Him. In 1990, we were preparing for Great Town for Christ's Crusade. As seems of God, you asked me to raise money for them. I and my wife we had agreed to give an amount of money. When we arrived at the venue of the program, I was a preacher. And I said, everybody, give what you had purpose to give in your heart. This my pretty girl said, let's give what we agreed to give. <sighs> Madam, it means I'll close my account if I give what we had agreed to give. She said, but, but you, you, we agreed on that. The superintendent came asking me, what are you two, two gossiping about? We are struggling how to obey God. He said, come on, give the money. Okay? Have you given your own? The grace, no. Anyway, my wife insisted we gave out the money. What was the amount? 10,000. 10,000. Do you know we came to only child for great only child for Christ who said that we came. And the anointing of the Lord was in cripples. Fourteen cripples walked. A young man who was born blind began to shout, this must be a house, this must be a car. I have never seen one before. The bishop of Anisha said to the crowd, if God can honor this small boy, let's honor him also. We shall send him back to you with a brand new Mercedes Benz and 75,000 naira. <laughs> Men and brethren, that was my biggest offering. Unlike in 1976, we went to Tutu to Aba. And they gave us offering of 1,500. My wife and I could not sleep for fear that armed robbers would soon come over 1,500. 
God will punish poverty. Sometimes doubt, unbelief, ignorance can combine to make us disobey God. And then God said to me, Uma, one day you sleep in a house with 10 million naira. In this life, he said, in this life. One day I came home, gave my wife a bag of money. She didn't know it contained money. She just took it and threw it into one of the rooms. The next day I said to her, Madam, uh, I gave you 10 million yesterday. What is the money? She said, you should not joke with such things as 10 million. I didn't see any kobo. I didn't, that bag I gave, what bag? She shouted. When your wife raises up her voice against your own, you better pray. <laughs> when she opened the bag I gave her, it contained 10 million. And she asked me, you mean we slept in a house with 10 million? What she did not know is that as long as you don't open your bag, nobody will know what it contains. <laughs> right where you are this night. This God shall entrust you with such money as 10 million one day. <laughs> Read on, sir. And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came, and Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto that, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And they, be and they builded him an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel. Everywhere God appeared to Abraham, he built an altar. I would like that we copy it. If God shows himself mighty on your behalf anywhere, try and raise an altar just for you and God. And maybe your wife. It shows you are in love with him. It shows you care. It shows you whatever habit to form will determine your level of greatness. If we can form the habit of prayer, we shall be great men. Whenever God appears to you, try and raise an altar there. And this God will love you more and will bless you more. Let's see the book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 164. What does it say? Seven times a day. Seven times a day. Do I praise thee? Do I praise and celebrate and worship you? Because oh of thy righteous judgment. Because of your righteous judgment. Read on. Great peace have they which love thy law. Those who love God, they will have great peace. Nothing shall offend them. Nobody will rattle them. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation. I have expected your salvation and, and hoped done, for it. And done thy commandments. I have done your commandments. My soul had kept thy testimonies. <laughs> My soul has kept your testimonies. And I love them exceedingly. I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy I testimonies. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies. And testimonies. For all my ways are before thee. You see, there are many of us who don't give testimonies because we are arrogant. Because we don't believe people will believe us. 
But the Bible says, blessed are those who give testimonies. Why? Testimony is a prophecy that says what God has done for A, he can do for B. And it is easy way to evangelize the gospel. Therefore, stop being afraid of what men will say. Let the world know what God has done for you. And so we say, Nini medio, Dina fio bon. Nini medio, Dina fio bon and Dina. Nini medio, Dina fio bon. Nini medio, Dina fio bon and Dina. Nini medio, Dina fio bon. Nini medio, Nini medio. I have said before, any man that God shall bless must ask God for wisdom, for creativity, for imagination, for the ability to see the invisible. Men who see the invisible shall receive the impossible. Every one of us must try to receive, to see the invisible. See he who cannot be seen. And you were candidates of great miracles. The ability to appreciate God and celebrate Him will, will make you an honored person in the presence of God. So give testimonies of the dealings with you. If God had rebuked you, when I was a young husband, I said to my wife, I was, it is fasting that made me what you saw in me. Though you are pregnant, join me to fast for one month. I was sure God said, oh man, this marriage is not about you. It's about me. How can you ask her to fast with pregnancy? Stop. Do your fasting. Let her eat her food and enjoy herself. Don't you ever ask her to fast when she's pregnant. Father, I thought this marriage is about me. And God said, no, it's about me, not you. <laughs> I said to her mother, you want to have food crusade, go on. I'll make it available. I'll not grumble, I'll not murmur again. Let the world know God dealings with you. It will help them to know you have he who cares and he who loves and he who corrects and he who prepares you for greatness. Beginning today, you're a candidate of great miracles. I don't want to keep you long. I will we have four people who repeatedly dream of death celebration of death they themselves die some form of fear and you panic on account of that and you worry on account of that but I'm going to ask God to separate you from that spirit of fear that spirit of death you are four in number. You will not go home with that fear. You will not go home with that spirit. I demand your freedom. We, we also have two people here tonight. Time and again, somebody takes money from them. And I'm going to demand that that hand that takes that money shall wither this night. I have seen five people who are going through 
great forests as it were. It's like somebody blocking their way and they're fighting their way out of that forest. But tonight, every spirit sent to make your life miserable shall now be arrested. We have, we have three sisters. Time and again in your dreams, you see men wanting to give you wedding rings to wear. And you get easily angry and easily irritable. Tonight I'm going to ask God to suppress what loves his spirit from you. Yeah. Let the right man come. Let the right man come. Yeah. Let there be a home for you. Yeah. A marriage for you. Yeah. A promissory home for you. Yeah. Home that shall produce great children. Yeah. We have four people here tonight. You don't seem to please anybody. Somebody help, somebody help, somebody help. Where, sorry, where are the workers? Sorry. <laughs> Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art called, Holy Jesus, do not pass me by. Savior, 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 yeah, my humble cry. Not pass me by. Say, Savior, say, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on all that thou art called, only Jesus, do not pass me.
have been struggling and battling against opposition. Everywhere they turn to, they find enemies at work. The enemy won't let them enjoy that work with you, dear Lord. But now I demand that all the enemies be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. Father, you promised us blessings. You promised us promotion and lifting. You said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Therefore, don't let your people fight alone. Everyone that the enemy has confronted in any form, the spirit of retardation, the spirit of poverty and failure, the spirit of humiliation and defeat, the spirit of helplessness. That demon that will bring people to a place where they will not know what to do again. Arise! And let them be scattered, 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 be scattered. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move. Workers help us. There are 16 of them. There are 16 of them. They will not go back the same. Father, there are 16 of them who are struggling in tears. Somebody help, somebody help, somebody help. There are 16 of them who are struggling in tears and in pain and who are shouting and saying, how long? How long shall we fight? Father, take over that battle from them and fight for them. Yeah. Every voice that speaks against them shall speak no more. Yeah. Every road blocked shall now be cleared. Yeah. Every pain anywhere shall now dry up. Yeah. Thou living spirit of God, let your people be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, How many do we have? Twelve, sir. Remaining four. That's number thirteen. Some of the help. Number fourteen. In the gallery. Father, you had promised me that every member of this fellowship shall know growth and no promotion and no lifting that you will make a way even where there is no way the hour has come whoever the enemy has blocked his or her way that way shall open it 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 shall open Father, anyone that comes from a family where other members of the family are busy fighting one another, I declare and I demand they shall have victory without struggle. Father, victory without struggle. Although the enemy is planning to harm their health, to cut short their lives, I command and demand it shall not be so. It shall not be so. It shall not be so. 
It shall not be so. It shall not be so. It shall not be so. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, Father, all those who are struggling with failure, the more they try to rise up, the more the enemy would block their way. Tonight I demand that way is open. It's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. Father, we have four people who have become discouraged, who have become unhappy, who have become depressed, who, who no longer enjoy their life because the enemy had made their lives very, very unbearable and difficult and hard. But now I, de I demand restoration of happiness. I demand close doors be made open. Yeah. Father, scatter every roadblock. Yeah. Scatter every hindrance. Yeah. Every sickness that has a name shall now disappear, 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 disappear. Disappear! Disappear! Father, there are two of them who feel like chained. They have lost the joy of their salvation and I demand that it be restored back to them yeah. on my left hand side on my right hand side and in front of me all those who have lost their joy of living the joy of their salvation the joy of their closeness with God now it shall be restored back back to them back to them back to them back to them the power of God in the name of Jesus move at the central area that's number one on my right hand side and on my left hand side father what has a beginning has an end as your people nobody has a right to make them miserable Nobody has the right to molest them, to torture them, to torment them, to mock them, to laugh at them. I therefore demand the freedom, total freedom, total freedom, total freedom, total freedom, total freedom.
Father, anyone that comes from a family where people hardly prosper, that power of limitation is now cancelled. Father, your promises to us must match our experience. You said you bless us. Beginning tonight, I demand only blessings shall come our way. Whatever is not a blessing shall not come our way. All those who cry over too many crises change their lamentation into laughter. Yeah. Rub your Holy Ghost all upon every hand. Yeah. Whatever they will lay their hand to do shall prosper. 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 Beginning tonight, men they don't know shall bless them. Those they know shall bless them. Their enemies shall give them gifts and hug them and greet them. This year is a great year. It's a year of promotion, a year of prosperity. A year of multiplied blessings. A year of means of mobility. A year of surplus supplies. A year of good health. A year of long life. Nobody shall miss it. Thank you. What an awesome God we serve. Jesus said, "The am my meal. I'm in my mind. This song, I yeah yeah. I come in now. Any day I came meal." I'm in my mind, this song, I yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, He am my me, oh. I'm in my mind, this song, I yeah, yeah. I can't enough, and you be young, I can be, oh. I'm in my mind, this song, I yeah, yeah. Give me 
Premature death knocks at their door. And there are four of you. You have been burying people every year the last five years. I now demand and declare you will bury no more. We have 10 families where there is no evidence of progress and financial blessings. But that story will now change. We, we have a sister. People have proposed to you three times. It never worked out. As I speak tonight, 
the next person that shall ask your hand in marriage it shall be a serious minded person it shall be a man who will fall in love with you a man that will celebrate you a man that will honor you the marriage will take off and will will bloom and will do beautifully well. Amen. Children shall come out of your womb. Amen. And the man shall prosper Amen. and have more than enough. Amen. Your children shall be noble children. Amen. And the more you serve God, the more he will promote you. Somebody help, somebody help her, somebody help her. Father, everyone that labors under this pale of a curse, <coughs> that curse is canceled. Father, beginning tonight, at the appearance of your children, doors shall open for them. They'll be filled with laughter, with songs, with dance. Beginning, somebody help, somebody help. Beginning tonight, they will live a life of success and rejoicing. Yes, who, those who used to hate them shall now love them. When they laugh, their neighbors shall join them to laugh. When they open the Bible to read, they'll understand the deep things of the Bible. It shall be so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. All those that God has touched and healed and blessed, come out here for me to cover your blessings with prayer. Be fast. If you know that you have had a miracle, God has visited you, God has blessed you, come quickly. Don't fight. Don't, everything must not be a fight. Nigerians. Amana. Yeyena basi amana. Aye. Amana. Eyena basi amana sosongo o amana amana mo eyena basi amana mo amana mo sosongo amana mo amana mo eyena basi amana mo sosongo o amana mo amana mo amana mo amana mo amana eyena basi amana sosongo o amana mo amana mo As a sacred name, Amen. a holy name, Amen. a known name, Amen. a protected name. Amen. And whatever we shall go from here, may heaven fight our every battle. Amen. Father, I declare tonight our night of new beginning. 
All the things we're looking for shall not come looking for us. We shall enjoy prosperity and promotion and lifting. What we're looking for shall come looking for us. All the prophetic pronouncements made over us shall give birth to miracles and fruits. Father, whatever the enemy took from us shall not be returned. Every closed door shall open for us. Our enemies shall be disgraced by God. Every mosquito that took interest in harassing us. When our enemies shall be cleared of our homes, they also shall be included. All those who came to minister to us in songs and in words, may the blessings of heaven go with them. All those who have been regular in coming to this program these three days shall cease to be ordinary people. Let an angel be assigned to each of us. And let the angels fight our every battle. Father, you are mighty. You are wonderful. Every prayer we shall say amen to shall come to pass. Father, you told me you will make tomorrow a great day. A day a day that whatever we lay our hand to do shall prosper. And from tomorrow we shall borrow money no more. We shall owe no more. We shall never beg anybody for money anymore. Whatever we shall put in our money to do shall yield great results. Whoever borrows money from us shall not rest until the money is paid back. But I speak peace into every marriage, every home. Every business center. Let there be peace. Let there be song and dance. Every sickness hiding anywhere has lost the right to hide anywhere. Do it and do more by asking Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a good clap up for everybody. Wait, wait, don't go, don't go, don't go. Tomorrow, whoever can bring three people who have never been to our meetings before, I will pray special prayer for you. Three people who have never been to any of our meetings, I will pray special prayer for you. But before you go back to your seats, Oh God, Mr. Russia, why are you rushing? S young man. I are you sure you're a Nigerian? You please find two people, say to them, whether my enemies like it or not, I am now blessed of the Lord. Tomorrow, please wait now. Why are we all in a hurry? I should be in a hurry. Tomorrow, plan to give special offering on behalf of your family. Decide what the offering will be. Name every member of your family. They shall benefit from that offering. It shall affect them positively. It shall make a way where there is no way.
They shall be remembered in God's book of life. And they shall be preferred people. Why don't you wait? Let the chairman come and dismiss us. And we shall go from there. We are going to repeat the fast we had today. Eat only your breakfast. Don't eat anything until we are through with the meeting tomorrow. I want you to be under the unction and anointing of fasting. And fasting has a way of turning you, a ruler, over your enemies. And I want you to become the ruler of your circumstances and your enemies beginning tomorrow. So, don't eat. What did I say? Don't eat. Don't eat your lunch. And please come early so that you can sit relaxed and wait for what God will do. Can we all raise up our hands and thank the Lord? Let the chairman come and dismiss us. Please, come. Always remember you are now blessed of the Lord. And nobody can put a cross upon you. And nobody can take your blessings from you. And nobody can cancel your blessings. And when your enemies come, God shall be waiting by the door to deal with them. You are now a preferred person. You are now a special person. Take three good minutes and just thank the Lord and bless him. And honor him for what he had done tonight.